G'day guys, it's Mark here from North Isles and today you'll join me and my little fluffy travel buddy Ginger as we camp at a beautiful campsite. I'll be showing you my new camping setup with a focus on a few new products that I've purchased that has drastically improved my setup. But before we head off, I'm going to take the Project Patrol down to the post box to drop off today's orders from the website. A quick thank you to Eddie, Callum and Nick for ordering this week. Now let's check out my campsite and I'll show you some of my gear. First thing I want to show you guys is brand new lights I bought. This was my first trip using them and I didn't want to go out and buy the roof rack lights again because I found that they just never lit up the campsite where I wanted them to and there'll be far too many shadows on the ground, the light being thrown at odd angles from the roof rack. So I bought these lights, they're called Hardcore U lights to do the job and I'm glad I bought them. I used them all weekend and I kept finding more uses for them as the weekend went on. They came in a pack of four and they can be charged all at the same time with the four way split USB cable. They also pack up into a hardcover case so I can keep them in the cargo box on top of my tray and they can get bashed around a bit. I like that they are both magnetic and have a built in elastic band. I use the magnetic feature to light up the ground by sticking them on the underside of my new swag stretcher from Oztrail and on the tub and doors of the ute. It was great having the tailgate down with the light placed on the tailgate so I could see Ginger while she was eating and drinking. I use the elastic feature to wrap the light around handles and in my swag on one of the hanging loops. Because they're low profile, it doesn't hang too low, so I don't feel like I'll hit my head on it when I'm in my swag. There was also some rain around which didn't bother the lights as well because they do have some water resistance. While I paid a bit under $100 for these, they were absolutely worth it and with the lowest setting lasting over 90 hours, these lit up my campsite all weekend, no worries, and they'll definitely go for a lot longer than that too. I like that I can stick the lights on surfaces around the campsite and then grab one to walk around or go to the toilet or take it to a different location. I'm stoked with these lights. In the description, I'll leave a link to this product and all of the other products I'm going to mention in this video. Let's move on to the next product. Now again, on the topic of lights, I wanted to show you this kind of weird lantern that I bought. It only cost me $50, but at the moment it's actually on sale for $25, which is an absolute bargain. You guys should definitely get one of these. It pumps out 800 lumens on its brightest setting, which is bright enough to light up a whole area. But the best bit is that it has a dimmable switch, which means that you can run this lantern for one and a half hours on maximum or all the way on low for 150 hours. It also has a built-in power bank, which is a bit strange, but very handy and is water resistant. And also it looks awesome. It's got an old style look and a rope handle. This is perfect for me because it's kind of got that old style, but it also doesn't require gas or fuel or petrol or anything like that. So it doesn't leak and, you know, make the car smell really bad if it leaks, which they often always do. I found this great to have on the table when camping or in the main area that you're staying. The handle made it easy to hang on the cargo racks and on angled edges like camp chair arms and things like that. At $25, this is an absolute bargain. I can't believe it's on sale for so cheap. Even at $50, this lantern is a great deal with the amount of features it has. I can't recommend this enough and I'm loving using this so far. Now I've got one more light to show you guys and I promise this is the last one, but lighting is so important for me around the campsite. It's really hard to get that right. Both lighting and shade for me are the two main things that are hard to get right. So this here is my multi-mode mini lantern that not only lights up small and medium sized areas, but also has a built-in bug zapper, which is super handy. I mainly use this as my light to walk around the campsite as I get ready to sleep. So I kind of use this just before I'm getting ready for bed, mostly because it has a really soft lens and it disperses light really softly. So it's not harsh on the eyes and it also doesn't attract many bugs. 
It's got this little fold out hook, which is handy too. And I hang this in my swag as well. And I put the bug zapper on for five minutes to get rid of those annoying bugs. So I don't have any other lights on except for that, just for about five or 10 minutes or so, just to zap those annoying bugs that, um, that ring in the ear. And they kind of end up in your swag the second you unzip it. So it's super handy just to get rid of those annoying little bugs that find their way in there. Now I've used this on every camping trip for the last two years and you can go back and have a look at some of my old videos and you will find it there. Now I just throw it in my cargo box, it gets banged around and it is as tough as nails. I can't even remember the last time I charged it but it will run up to 15 hours straight before needing a recharge. Now moving on to my sleeping setup and I finally went out and bought my first swag stretcher. After two years of camping on the ground, I finally bought a stretcher. I've been seeing a lot of people using them and they just look so comfy so I figured I'll give it a go. The one I bought is an Oztrail stretcher. I like the case that it comes in. It seems pretty hard wearing. It's not super thin anyway and it's made out of heavy materials, the actual um, swag stretcher itself. But a downside of that is it's quite heavy. I found that if I wiggle around a little bit, especially like vertically from end to end, it sways a bit, but once you're still, it is very solid. I used it on both nights of the camping trip and the padding was really nice and I didn't wake up feeling like I fell from a building for the first time in my two years of camping. So I'll definitely take that as a win and I will recommend this product because it is built really solid, but it also is very soft. The padding on it as well is soft enough where you could even just lie on it with very little bedding. So I think it's a great option and gives me a little bit more flexibility with my sleeping setup. Now moving on to my power setup and I've been testing out the EcoFlow Delta, which is a hundred amp hour power station. And I'm just testing it to see if it's going to be suitable for my big mid-year trip. And I'm just trying it on these little trips to see how it goes. And I was really pleased to find out that over 24 hours, I only used 25%. And that was me running my 53 liter dual zone my Coolman with just the main compartment of the fridge on and the small compartment switched off. And I also charged a couple of things like the lights and also my phone. The ambient temperature was a lot cooler than it normally is due to winter approaching. And also where I was camping, it was a little bit higher in altitude than some of the places I normally camp. So the fridge didn't cycle as much, but I believe the EcoFlow system is a much more efficient system than my old lithium setup. Like I said, I charged my phone lights and also ran the fridge for 24 hours. So I believe I should get around 48 to 72 hours running my freezer as well before I need to switch to my 45 amp hours of usable lead acid battery in the Hilux. With my current setup and running all my appliances, I can stay in one spot without solar for five days, which is not bad with the simple setup that I've got here and really not spending too much money to be able to get to this point. Guys, I get asked a lot about my fridge and it's a My Coolman 53 liter. It's definitely not a cheap product but I have been using this now for the same amount of time as I use my old Brass Monkey. And I tell you what, that Brass Monkey fridge was in terrible shape compared to how this My Coolman is right now. I also get asked a few questions about the capacity and 53 liters for me is perfect on bigger trips and also on smaller trips as I just turn off and on certain sections of the fridge as I need it. So the dual zone of the fridge freezer is awesome. I'm loving the flexibility. Now guys, before we move on to the next item, can I get you to do me a massive favor and click the like and subscribe button. It helps me out in more ways than you can possibly imagine. Thank you so much and let's move on to the next item. I have also received a lot of questions about my cooking setup and what I eat when I go camping and things like that, which I'll cover a little bit more in the future. But just so you guys know what my camping setup is and what my cooking setup is, I use a Spinifex table and a Spinifex gas burner as well. So the Spinifex table's legs unscrew and are stored within the folding table, which is why I bought it. It was the most compact and strongest table that I could find. So if you're after a compact table, this is one that I definitely recommend. When the table is fully assembled and the legs screw on, they can buckle at that screw on point. It's kind of halfway up the table. So if a significant weight is put on it, it can bend from there, but it's fine for cooking and for food preparation. Just don't put anything overly heavy on there. Now, when we were camping, my parents liked this table so much that they bought one for their caravan as it stowed away in small areas and they are loving using that small table. You'll see from this picture that I glued some exercise matting under the leg holder to stop it from rattling around. That was when I had to travel with everything in my Prado because you know anything that rattled, I would hear it because it was a wagon, but this will come in handy when I go camping my patrol as well. So uh, just a little hack there if you wanna stop that rattling around, just put some exercise mat underneath the little leg holder 
within the table. This is a great table I use it on most trips. This is the 90 centimeter model, so it's a smaller of the two, and it's on clearance right now for 50 bucks, or for an extra $9, you can get the 120 centimeter model as well, which gives you a little bit of extra size. I haven't used that one, so I can't speak about the performance of that, but if it's anything like the 90 centimeter one, it should be good value for money. And at $59, that's a lot of table for your money. Now, finally, I have to mention the load bars on the tub of the Hilux. They have been awesome in doubling the carrying capacity of the Ute. But at this point, guys, I just can't recommend them. While they're very useful for the camping side of things and the mounting of the tie downs was an absolute breeze, the paint on the steel bracket tub mounts are easily chipped and you know it came from the factory chipped as well, which I wasn't too happy about. The crossbars are aluminium, which I have no problem with. Aluminium is great, but they came bent from the factory, which required me to actually bend them back. Uh, to make everything fit as well. And I also noticed that those bars do bend if I tie down cargo boxes or anything down too heavy or I screw bolts down too hard. It does actually bend that aluminium. It's a little bit soft, I think. I definitely think Front Runner could have designed these a little bit better with using aluminium one or two millimeters thicker and making the crossbars a little bit more easily removable than what these are. This system is designed to stay on and not to be removed quickly. I've since found a rhino rack system that keeps the mounts on the tonneau track and the crossbars are held on with just a quick release. So I think that might be a better system for me to use in the future. And that was actually sent in by some viewers through my Instagram. So I really do appreciate that for those people that sent me through that suggestion as it's gonna be a bit more accessible. And I, you know, I really might have to look at investing in another system so I can get those cross rails off when I'm doing my job during the week. Well guys, that concludes today's video and I hope that you enjoyed a little bit of a walk around of the campsite where I can show you some of the new items I'm using and also some of my favorite items that I've been using for a couple of years as well. If you guys could do me a massive favor, click the subscribe button and also like the video. It helps me out in more ways than you can imagine. And also if you wanna purchase any of these products, check them out in the description. It will take you to the place to purchase these. Next week's video is gonna be another budget patrol build episode. So stick around for that. It's going to be an awesome some time and I'm really looking forward to getting stuck into the patrol build again where we've got a lot of parts on the way for that and it's going to end up being absolutely awesome. I can't wait to get stuck into it. Alrighty guys, I'll see you next week and I'll talk to you down in the comment section. See you down there.